113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Evolutionary question number 18. Did humans evolve directly from Neanderthals? When we look around in the fossil record, Neanderthals are, you know, they're held up as the closest relatives to humans. You hear that quite a bit. That, you know, our ancestors were Neanderthals. It's not super accurate to say that, though, because... We can't tell for sure by looking at Neanderthals that we actually evolved from them. In fact, we're actually quite certain that we did not evolve directly from them. We actually now have genetic evidence where we can sequence the DNA of Neanderthals and humans. And it looks like instead of evolving from them, they were a sister clade to us. And that uh, there were some Europeans that actually intermixed with them, so interbred with them. So Europeans do have a little bit of Neanderthal DNA in them. And uh, other human groups, other human populations do not. We all share a lot of DNA with Neanderthals from our common ancestor, but Neanderthals evolved in a separate pathway that humans were evolving. And some of those unique Neanderthal traits did end up in Europeans through crossbreeding. But I actually talked quite a bit about how this works, how it is that we determine who our ancestors are when we're looking at fossils, and what the what the limitations are when we're looking at fossils. Recently, when I was interviewed by Jonathan Guzman. Jonathan Guzman is he's got he's a he's a young guy. He's got a YouTube channel where he talks about evolution and dinosaurs and paleontology. And he had me on there just to kind of talk about how do we know who's related to who in the fossil record. I just wanted to show you this clip because I want you to know that his channel exists. But also, I, it was just a good conversation. We hit on some some topics that are really important there, and including whether or not Neanderthals are our direct ancestors. So here I'm going to give you just a short clip of part of our conversation. And then down in the video description, if you want to see the whole conversation, you can click on that and see our entire discussion. It was a lot of fun. Enjoy. Uh, how, do, how do we develop theories on origins from fossils? Like how, do, how can we tell who came from where and who's a cousin of from the fossils? Yeah, that, that can get really tricky. Yeah. Uh, first off, if you look at most textbooks, that, so there's kind of a misconception, uh, especially when people are first starting to study evolution, that when we find a fossil, you know, like a Neanderthal, for example, mm -hmm. that that is the ancestor of modern humans. It's not actually how it works. If you look at a textbook, you'll see that you'll have like modern humans here. You'll have Neanderthals here. Then you'll have lines that go down and connect to what we would say is the hypothetical common ancestor between the two. Yeah. And the reason that we do that is that you can never just tell by looking at a specimen if it was the actual ancestor of a different specimen or of a, a modern animal. And to, there's, a, there's a kind of thought experiment. Like imagine that you don't know who your grandparents are or any of your extended family. And somehow someone comes up to you and says, hey, I'm your cousin. We're going to have a family reunion come hang out and you believe him and you go there and you find a guy who's old enough to be your grandpa. Yeah. Well, obviously he might not be your grandpa, right? Mm -hmm. He might be your grandpa's brother or cousin <laughs> or something. So we can't ever tell for sure just by looking, you know, even if, even if this guy looks kind of like you and he's the right <laughs> age, we can't say for sure that that is the, the ancestor. Uh -huh. And the same as with the fossils, if the fossil looks right, and is the right age it doesn't tell us that it's definitely the ancestor. So like Archaeopteryx is considered one, you know, the earliest bird, yeah. but it's very likely, in fact, that you know his lineage that his it's a whole species mm -hmm. their lineage was a dead end, and that the common ancestor with modern birds was back further in time and split off. So Archaeopteryx is a good example of an early bird, but it's not. He's not, you can never say with certainty that it is the ancestor of modern birds. Yeah. So it's, sense. yeah. So I think it's, uh, I think there's actually a misconception for a lot of people that think like, oh, well, Archaeopteryx is the ancestor of all modern birds. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. some people will make the argument like, oh, Archaeopteryx is the ancestor of all modern birds. Therefore, if we find modern birds before Archaeopteryx, then Archaeopteryx cannot be a missing link or whatever. Right. Um, 
but yeah, like you said, I think that there are. I I think I do remember seeing a, a phylogeny tree in one in a paper that I was reading, um, that has like uh, Archaeopteryx. In it. I think all of them have like them in uh, Archaeopteryx in a dead end, like it, their branch just splits off, but they share yeah. a common ancestor with the Compsognathids, which you know, and and uh, uh, eventually evolve into Cynoceropteryx, you know, Compsognathus itself and whatnot. Um, yeah. So I think there's. But, we actually always assume that a fossil is a, a fossil species is, is a dead end because it's just more likely that uh, we found the dead end than what we found the actual literal ancestor of a modern species because because there's always this branching and splitting that happens constantly mm-hmm. and I, I mean just if you just do the math you'll find that it's it's most likely that um, the species we've found is. It's just just a group that evolved from a common ancestor to the main yeah. group. That doesn't mean that they can't tell us about how things evolved, because you can see, like in Archaeopteryx, it's a very primitive flyer. It's got three fingers in its hand that are that are independent still. The the flight feathers coming off the middle finger. Mm-hmm. It's got a it's got the, the pointer finger, the middle finger, and the ring finger. We see that bird, modern birds have this, but these three fingers are fused together, and it's only the top finger that can move a little bit. It's got the alula on it, which is a little um, part of the the wing that sticks out when they're trying to slow down. Yeah. And the other two fingers are completely fused together in modern birds, and they usually don't have claws on all of their fingers. Archaeopteryx had claws on all of them. We can see how uh, these forms evolved, uh, even though we can never have absolute certainty that we're looking at a, an actual ancestor. We're we're looking at. Uh, uh, probably a sister lineage to the actual ancestor. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think that was needed to say. I think you needed to say that because mm-hmm. there is actually a like a lot. Like, I was reading uh, an article from the Creation Ministries International uh, yesterday, and I'm actually doing a response, um, like, article to it. Um, but it's written by Jonathan Sarfati and uh, Brian Thomas. Uh, spoiler mm-hmm. alert. So there you have it, my conversation with Jonathan Guzman. Just just a little taste of that conversation. If you want to see the whole thing, there is a link down in the video description. Next question.